Welcome back, everyone. We are bringing you something a little bit different today. Uh, this is a review of the Fellowship of the Ring novel from 1954, which I oh. am fascinated by. Like, we have kind of a tainted view at this point because the films which came out in the early 2000s were so popular that it's hard to remember what the collective thought was around the Lord of the Rings prior to Peter Jackson uh, making those films. Um, so it is interesting to hear what someone might have to say from the fifties. Like right when it came out. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. When it comes out and this is a, a new, not a new genre, but certainly something new to the fantasy genre in that this world is so rich and, um, you know, it's, it, I don't think there's anything like it before, and there's very few that live up to it um, even afterwards. So this would have been a very different style of novel for people to wrap their head around. At least that's my perception. So it's interesting to see what someone might have said back in the day. Um, seems to, just gleaning from it, it seems to be positive. <laughs> yeah, which which I am... I am sh I'm shocked by, but not like not because I don't think Lord of the Rings is good. This but... would have been very new, a very new genre back then. Yeah, exactly. And just the idea of, you know, reading a book that is fully set in a different world. Yes, there's going to be human like figures, but there's there's almost no connection to at the time, the modern day of the 1950s, if, if you look at the other fantasy uh, type works, you're looking at more, um, you know, me short medieval fantasy or um, early sci-fi uh, with like Frankenstein type of stuff. So to, to get a, to get a novel that is in a completely different world with mostly completely different creatures that are, that are going to be the ones narrating the story in the hobbits um it's just it's interesting to me to to hear what someone might say and yeah it does sound like it is genuine genuinely positive and i think i think it's just because it is so different and you know that seems to be uh even if you're the first mover and you're not you're not quite at up to par yet people do still recognize that there there does take a lot of ingenuity to get to make that first step in the genre. So uh, the, the, the positivity, it's shocking to me that someone would appreciate it back then, but then I guess not shocking that, you know, they, they wouldn't have had anything else to compare it to. And so being the first kind of big epic fantasy, uh, fantasy world would have been something that would have intrigued a lot of readers, I, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, it is, I'm curious to see if, and now this is something I, I don't think it says here in this article, but, you know, there, there are people today who will say, you know, it's too long. And uh, that is something that's always, I've always wondered about. Uh, the length of the books, um, for a reader back then, I, I feel like it would have been, it would have looked like almost insurmountable uh, to 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 start up this journey. Even t today, people seem to hesitate to jump into a big uh, trilogy or multi-book series unless they are avid readers. So that's one thing I've I've always been curious about: is was there any pushback from from the masses about the length of it not that i think it should change it just you know it, people are going to i think most people lean towards shorter novels 
because they know, you know, if it sucks, it'll be over quicker. And if it's good, I can just find more from this author type of thing. So uh, that's one thing I've, I've always thought I would like to know more about. It doesn't seem to say that here, but it does say that. Um, I mean, I, I do, I do think that he, they, they forced him to break it up into three books. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And and I also, that I also know that the editor uh, tried correcting a spelling of elves and dwarves. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's one of the good <laughs> memes out there. Uh, to, it, to be fair, the English language is kind of chaotic and random, so either one works. <laughs> it's just obviously Tolkien had uh, a particular he, strong preference. Yeah. yeah, he hit his preference drawing on more old English. Uh, style of spelling of words so you know i i i'm fine going either way i'll I'll follow tolkien on this one works for me <laughs> but yeah well, I'm, it, roll, I, it rolls off the tongue better dwarves versus dwarfs true and and elves is like elves as well I, yeah i i i agree there's 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 both a, a pleasantness to like the, the visuals of the word without having that f later on in the word and then also like you said the sound of it as you as you speak it uh so yeah i'm i'm all for that as well um but yeah i'm, I'm happy to see that like this person writes that uh no fiction that they have read in the last five years has given them more joy than the fellowship of the ring um so that that's uh that's pretty what big fiction? praise i want to know what fiction came out between 49 and 54 <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm curious too. Uh that I, you know, it's actually right around the time of um I guess it's just before the time of uh like the James Bond novels uh, oh, really? coming out. Yeah, so yeah. you'd have that to to compete with potentially. Uh, depending on if that counts as fiction to this guy. <laughs> Cuz you know what I mean, it's hard to compare a at the time what would be a modern spy novel versus a uh high fantasy world building uh epic it, it's not quite the same type of medium I, I don't think even though they're both novels they're both books they're the lord of the rings like tolkien has a much harder job and this is something that i've always admired even if i sometimes joke about the length of time he might spend on the you know descripting uh, describing the setting the the world building is such a hard part of any new type of fantasy uh, area, whether it be sci-fi, like like aliens or fantasy creatures. And Fahrenheit 451 came out in 1953. That's kind of oh, there you classic. go. Yeah, and um, 1984 would have come out in 48. Uh, mm. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Like I said, like I I think. As much as I like to sometimes poke fun at Tolkien, uh, I do think he is a masterful world builder. And I I do think that's something, and I'm glad to see that that is something that even early audiences recognized, was that it's it's not the same as just writing a novel set in the modern time period of the day. You have to basically write the entire history of a unique planet to... to have people be caught up and up to speed with the the modern politics of the society that's going on so uh, i i do think i do think tolkien deserves that credit when when it's given to him um and and uh you know i think a lot of a lot of new modern writers who are writing fantasy uh, owe owe a lot to someone like tolkien making that first step and uh really trying to to describe a completely different world yeah all right what uh, that's it for this one let us know what you guys think of this uh this little neat article here and uh i'm i'm also curious does anyone know of any earlier high fantasy you know epic uh fantasy books prior to lord of the rings uh, I would love to to hear your thoughts on those ones because I'm always curious to see, you know, what what was out there for readers to even compare this to back in the day. I regret to announce this is the end. I bid you all a very fond farewell. <laughs>